Welcome back. It's the run up on Plus TV Africa. In apparent reaction to public unease over the federal government's long silence and delayed response to the March 3rd Supreme Court ruling on the currency redesign, the presidency yesterday said the CBN did not need a further directive from the president, Mohamed Buhari, to comply with the apex court's order. Well, joining us to discuss this is Vincent Essien. He's a legal practitioner. Hello, Vincent. Uh, good, good morning, Mary. Good morning. Yes, and along the line, in the course of this discussion, we hope to be joined by Tunji Andrews, who is an economist, so that we'll be able to balance this up. However, as we wait for Tunji to join us, Vincent, well... I'm going to quote from, an, I'm going to take an excerpt from uh, a statement issued yesterday by the Acting Director of Corporate Communications, Isa Abdumumin, that's of the Central Bank of Nigeria, so that we can uh, begin to dissect this uh, piece by piece. Well, the statement, part of it read, in compliance with the established tradition of obedience to court orders and sustenance of the rule of law principle that characterized the government of President Major General Ibrahim ba uh, Mohammed Buhari retired and by extension the operations of the Central Bank of Nigeria as a regulator deposit money banks operating in Nigeria have been directed to comply with the Supreme Court ruling of March 3rd 2023. So I'm going to start Vincent by asking you just how obedient has the CBN been to court orders in this administration? Um, in this administration, um, has the CBN really been involved in legal matters? I think um, it's come up basically in regards to the um, currency exchange program. It's been an unfortunate scenario that has happened especially in view of the hardship that has been wrought on innocent citizens. Very, very many pathetic stories have happened and I've seen. Thankfully, that has come to an end by that statement by the CBA. And that statement actually was, um, was a follow-up to a statement that came from the uh, media advisor of the president that said that um, the CBA doesn't need further directives because the president is well known for his um, obedience to court orders, legitimate court orders, and um, court orders that are not that are not um, dis disputed, you know, because we have to make a distinction between a court order that is an appeal that is appealed, you know. But once the, the Supreme Court makes a ruling, and that's the final, that's the apex court in our jurisdiction, and there's actually no need for anybody to to second guess what the step of the president would be. And that's what the statement of the president uh, said. So clearly, um, maybe the CBA was waiting for some directive. I don't think that was necessary. And the president came out to clarify that the CBA has complied. Thankfully, it's the, the compliance, that statement will follow by steps to ensure that um, we start to ease off this choke of the economy that has unfortunately involved this policy. Hmm. Well, Justice, uh, according to a judgment delivered by Justice Emmanuel Ajim, uh, the president did breach uh, the Constitution in the manner he issued the directives for the NARA notes. Please comment on this. Well, um, I, I saw that aspect of the judgment, and um, hey, there's, there's, there's some element in, in, in that judgment that you could um, subscribe to, because clearly... Um, the initial ruling of the, of the Supreme Court on the 8th was that uh, the old and new notes denomination should be allowed to run until pending determination of the suit before it. So um, there was a decision by the, by the president to say that they had allowed the 200 uh, notes and he didn't really mention the other notes. So maybe there wasn't full compliance with the Resent ruling of the Supreme Court in that, in that, and thankfully that has been corrected. All right, well, still staying with statements from the Justice Emmanuel Ajim, because this is something that borders on obedience to the judiciary. 
you know, and the deepening of our democracy. And so in further, further statements from this same justice, I'm going to quote, the rule of law upon which our democratic governance is founded becomes illusionary if the president of the country or any authority or person refuses to obey the orders of the court. The disobedience of the orders of courts by the president in a constitutional democracy as ours is a sign of the failure of the constitution and that democratic governance has become a mere pretension and is now replaced by autocracy or dictatorship. How do we deepen our democracy if the apex court is now being seen as a toothless bulldog? Well, um, I wouldn't really say that we've got to that point. Um, things, their processes to even implement new police and government as their processes. I'd, I'd like to say that those processes have come to fruition now. The government has um, complied fully with the ruling of the Supreme Court. Um, Ten days after. Then, Clearly the judge, clearly the ruling by the ruling as pronounced by the justice made some strong statements and to reinforce the fact that the judiciary should be supreme, the law should be supreme, the constitution should be supreme. And that that's that's, that's the foundation of democracy. So mm -hmm. um, I'm happy that the president and the CBN have fallen in line with the judgment of the Supreme Court. I, I think that we should move forward from there and probably learn from his experience. Uh, and ensure that this only strengthens our democracy. So I don't think there's any need to to keep playing. It's not going to help. I think what we need to do is um, ensure that um, we move to a situation where we start to ameliorate um, the pains that have been um, brought upon our citizens by this policy. This is our brought of pains, in spite of what I think are the noble intentions, and maybe there are some gains as well. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, I think the government is about the best good for the people. So hopefully we can get to that stage. Yeah, well, you're saying move on from there. But, you see, ordinary Nigerians like us, uh, who are not lawyers like you, we do get worried when it does appear. Even the NBA has spoken and warned, you know. Matter of fact, the NBA president, Yakubu Mekiel, SAN, spoke on this matter and he warned that the bar would resist any action undermining the rule of law, constitution, and democracy in the country. Now, this delay has also led to labor, the organized labor, threatening and giving the federal government seven days ultimatum to fix all of this mess caused by this narrow redesign. So this is a very serious issue. With borders on our constitution and our democracy. Yeah, it, it, these are serious issues. I mean, the NBA spoke, the labor made, and we don't, definitely we didn't want to finish off uh, uh, the second elections and head into a national strike. You know, um, but thankfully, all this has been averted. To me, I think it, 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 our democracy still has a call that we have to to look back and learn from my experiences, and this is just one of them. But the most important thing is that at the end of the day. Um, the Constitution has been respected. The authority of the Supreme Court, which is the apex court and the final arbiter in our judicial system, has been has been consolidated, and the, the executive has ensured that there will be full compliance with the ruling of the Supreme Court. And this is, is, is actually a precedent that will be laid for future governments to understand. The delay is unfortunate. Uh, the the non-immediate in compliance is unfortunate, but I think where we are now is that there's full, there will be there's full compliance in effect by the statement by the CBN. I think we, we should move forward from there. That's my that's my advice. All right. Um, some would say that the purpose for all of this narrow redesign policy may have been defeated because the politicians did have access to this money from what we saw. Um, they had access to this money. Nigerians suffered, the unbanked Nigerians suffered. Those who do not have access to the internet or who could not use the internet to uh, transact 
you know, with the banks, they all suffered. We saw all of it on social media. And even as you went around the street yourself, you saw Nigerians suffering from all of this. So it will look like the purpose has been defeated. Well, um, it's, it's, it's for CBN to, dis, to define what the exact purpose of that policy was. CBN is usually um, strictly to confine itself to monetary policy. And clearly, uh, management of currency is one of the areas that fall within the ambit of monetary policy. So they, have the, they, they actually have the authority to regulate monetary policy, currency, and this is one of the things, but in the, a lot of things came out in the course of this that seemed to indicate that they were stepping beyond their core focus, not their mandate, their focus. Because you, know, you, you, you can use currency to, to control a lot of things, but clearly the most important thing is inflation, the most important thing is the exchange rate, you know, money supply deals with all this. And, 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 and they have to look at how much of that has been achieved. By this policy, you know, because unfortunately, I think some ground, some initial preparatory groundwork was not laid, because clearly there is a there's, there's a there's a push to move Nigerians towards cashless, and which I support, I totally agree, you know. But I think the infrastructure to move the the, the number of people and the volume was not there in the first place and that's why you found out that um even the digital transactions went on choke you know it's because it, 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 the capacity must be ready so i think cbn needs to look back the policy itself is not bad but the me methodology of implementing the policy has to be looked again and this this six months actually gives the cbn the policy has not been scrapped really i mean the new the new NARA notes are still valid they've already been issued so the, the, what the CBN has done is wisdom, which everybody agrees, is and they've given CBN more time and more, a larger window in which to implement this policy. And hopefully, they'll take advantage of it and uh, cure some of the um, fears and concerns that people had that there were some ulterior motives, which, which also affected the reception of the policy and the perception of the policy itself, which was not necessary, in my own view. Yeah, it actually has thrown up so many things, which is uh, the fact that we have so many of our people still unbanked in the villages, you know, in the rural areas. Also, it did throw up the fact that the digital payment solutions it still has lots of challenges that the banks should look into. Clearly, clearly. But if it, for me, uh, the key thing is it's, it's also it's, it's a, that challenge is also an opportunity. So I, I'm, I'm expecting the, um, the fintech sector in Nigeria, which is very dynamic, mm. to take advantage of that opportunity. It's an opportunity and it's, it's something that I'm sure will, will happen in almost simultaneously. You know, I think that the fintech sector should step into that, to that and try to fill that space, expand the infrastructure, and then we will get there. You know, one of the things that happened that expected to have been done was CBN license to GSM companies as um, we had the MOMO, which is already been done. But those things haven't been deepened before this policy came in. Mm -hmm. So I think the fintech sector needs to expand that digital space because a lot of Nigerians are actually on the internet. More, and and, and, and um, our internet penetration has actually been deepened all over the country. But the culture is also the second part. You know, you, know, you, you don't just migrate people from 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 um, cash cashless without assessing the cultural factor. How much how much of preparation did you make for people like you said, the rural population who are used to cash, the market women? That's where we, we had this choke, really. You know, and, and, and even transportation systems. But why 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 are we majorly paying cash to to get on board our transportation and our buses, but that's not necessary. So, I mean, the, 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 the necessary steps, the pretty steps that need to have been done before this policy were, was rolled out, we're not done. And that's why we had the choke. You know, people can't get to work because they can't get on a bus and they don't have cash to pay, and they have money. They have money in their accounts, but they don't just have it in their hands. 
So it, it, it's something that CBN needs to go back and reflect upon. Like I said, the policy itself is, 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 is a good one, but it's, time, it's, it's something that needs to be done with a lot of deep thinking and not so that people don't have the impression that you're trying to achieve some kind of agenda. <clears throat> Yeah, the CBN no doubt has its work cut out for it. Um, one of the things that this also threw up is the issue of how, how much mm. monitoring goes mm. on in the banking sector. How much of a mm. grip does the CBN have on the commercial banks? Because we did see at the initial phase of all of this, uh, the DSS broke into, well, got into some banks and saw that they were hoarding money. They were holding money that the CBN supposedly had given for them to dis disperse to Nigerians. Yeah, um, I think the CBN is the regulator of the bank system. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, the instances which you spoke, we spoke to, uh, whenever you have scarcity, whenever you have scarcity, inadequate supply of the product, then you start to have those kind of scenarios emerging. Because too many people are trying to choose. First of all, I don't think adequate numbers of the new currency were pushed into the money supply system. And that created discussion. And that creates an arbitrage. People are taking the banks, not just the banks, even the, um, the, uh, what the POS system, which had come into play and had been, had been very helpful. So the thing is, the thing is, CBN is to look whole structure of the finance, it's not just the banks. Because how many people can go? I can tell you that I have a local government in my state in acquire them that doesn't have a bank. You know, so I mean there are many local governments that don't have banks. So it's not just the banking system, it's a whole financial system. And again, you have to go to digital banking. I just opened an account with the bank. I don't have to mention today. I didn't step into the bank. They sent me the account to pay forms and I paid it online and the account is open. So we need to start to deepen that kind of system. And of course, there are online banks in Nigeria. So what we need to do is ensure that we deepen that kind of infrastructure. If once there is not adequate supply of any product, any product, talk less of cash, then we're going to create a scenario where um, people are going to take advantage. Because I mean, scarcity creates an advantage for people who have it. I can look at people who don't have it. That's what happened. All right. Um Let's still go back to the fact that we have a large number of our people unbanked and how the CBN would have to go about getting them to adopt to digital banking. Don't forget that most of these people who are unbanked are also not literate you know, enough. How do you think the CBN can achieve this? It's like we have a peculiar situation here. I still think that... Um the phone, the, the phone networks, and, and I still go back to the fact that they license most of the GSM uh, companies to, to provide um, money banking services. And most, like, actually, I think the penetration of the phone penetration in Nigeria is, is pretty, is considerable, maybe like 60, 70%. You know, not, not everybody needs a bank account. Children who are under the age of 18 or 17 well, you can have children accounts. But they're not actively banking. So, for the population that is economically active, I think that our full penetration is good enough. So we can leverage on our the penetration of our um, uh, what, what GSM networks on that. We can ride on that, and then take like it is. A, there's a culture for that for the for the people who still want to hold the money in the hand. There's a culture thing. You shouldn't lose gap. You shouldn't lose track of that. So you need to make a deliberate effort to allow people to understand that the money in the phone, the money in the account, or in the, or in, or in the digital money is still their money and can serve the same purpose as the, as the money in your hand. And it's a cultural thing. And there was no, there was no attempt to try and reach people in their languages, in different looks and crannies of the country. No attempt at all. And you just expect people to go into a system that they're not culturally in tune with. You know, I still have people, who, even before this policy came, I still have people who you want to make transfers to and they don't want it. You know, people, most people want to do is go to ATM and collect money. So 
I think that the, the cultural aspect, the education, has to be pushed in as well. And that's the job of CBN. They need to do that before, before we actually get to the point where uh, um, we can start to compare. But truly, again, one of the things they have to do is that they have to look at the, the, um, the bills in circulation. They, they both have their own content. You know, uh, co how cash handling is expensive. So what are the options for them? Do, do we need to coin some of our, some of our bills? You know, I mean, Nigeria is the only country that doesn't use coins in, in modern that I've been to around. So, I mean, those are the other options that they should look about. If they are concerned about the cost, the cost of cash, then they have to look at those options so that it, and they stay away from all thoughts of saying you, you don't want to use money for for buying votes. That's that's not the job of CBN. I looked at CBN. CBN has no public has no business going there. Even 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 when you talk about kidnapping and all that, that's not it. That's the job of the police and the security services. So what you need to do is focus on core monetary policy functions. And once you get it right, you will you trickle off to the other sectors that you're concerned about. It, it would appear that you're sharing the opinions of some who argue that uh, Godwin Amirfele, the CBN uh, governor, does not have an idea of how the economy should run. No, I wouldn't say so. I mean, I, I think that I think that um, the CBN governor clearly has become very controversial. Um, there were some areas in which I, I bought into his strategy. Um, clearly, the options are sort of the rapid increase in money supply. People say printing money, and then um, his interventions, CBN-led interventions in many sectors of the economy, which have been more direct than usual. But I actually support some of those interventions that have been made to spur production. You know, uh, especially the um, agricultural sector, we've seen that in the, in, the, in the loans that have been pushed down in the agricultural sector, and they've had some impact in, in terms of agricultural production. So I support that. You know, there are some that are very radical, like CBN getting leading the banks to get involved in the movies, national theater has been done, you know, CBN, that's radical. But, you know, provided it is it's supporting production of goods and growing the economy, well, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, but I don't, I wouldn't say he doesn't have an idea. Uh, clearly, he's been CBN governor for uh, two terms now. One of the few to actually last his long. I don't think he doesn't have an idea. But, you know, the office does come with some pressure, so I don't know what kind, I'm, I'm not there. I don't know what, what he's feeling, but clearly um, he has, he's been compared with this uh, CBN willing to tinker with this particular policy. Hopefully he will do that you know, and um, get it right. <laughs> Again, uh, he needs to ensure that he's working in sync with the physical authorities. I think sometimes he, he, is, he, he was played in that space as well. So hopefully it's, there's still time. But anyway, the new government is coming in, hopefully they will, they will be in charge of this. It's still the run-up on Plus TV Africa. And we're taking a look at the Naira redesign policy and the fact that the CBN governor has finally bowed to pressure and has given directives, you know, ordering the commercial banks to allow the use of the old notes and that the old notes remain legal tender, just as pronounced by the Apex Bank. And I have... Vincent Asian, a legal practitioner, with me taking a look at this. Vincent. Vincent. Yeah, I'm here. All right. Here. Yeah. So it's a good thing that the CBN has finally bowed to pressure 10 days after the judgment by the CBN and uh, 10 days after Nigerians have been in the limbo, in the dark, wondering what next. What next? Should we use this money? Should we not use this money? The president has not spoken. The CBN has not spoken. So finally, finally, all those uh, doubts are put to rest. But we have to also project and look forward uh, to the future because I'm looking at January 2024 at this point and wondering, by the time this judgment which has said that these old notes uh, remain legal tender to the 31st of this year. What happens in January of 2024? 
how confident will Nigerians be that when we get to that, we'll not be back, history will not repeat itself? Well, um, like I said, six months is it's not so it's not such a long time, but I think there's some things that are like that need to be done. I keep emphasizing the, the cultural aspect of it and the, the social aspect. A lot of education needs to be done. We have agencies, Nigerian orientation agency, push this push this information out there. You know that we are uh, slowly and certainly migrating to. Um, cash this. So let's let's have that. CBNC has an element of control. You know what I mean? You, 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 and I'm saying it because they, 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 it, it depends again. They can they have the power to control the money supply and determine the quantum of money that's in the system. So it, it, even 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 in a situation where they are obeying in the Supreme Court uh, judgment. So what I'm saying is that uh, the, the the move towards cashless is a certain is a certainty. In six months, what the, what happens? In six months, they could very well decide that by then the, the old currency may 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 continue to run. They, they have the mechanism to slowly take it out, which is what a lot of people were advocating. It was a, it was a sudden shock. It was a sudden shock treatment. That, that actually aggravated brought us to the point where we are in terms of the pains that have been inflicted. So what can be done by January is, again, hopefully a new, a new, a new administration is coming to place, maybe with a new, um, they, they have to factor that as well, that they will have, will have their own policies. And um, that's, my, that's also the candidate of my party. So we will have, we'll have our own programs and approach to dealing with this and just let it have a positive impact on the money supply situation. But for now, in obedience to CBN ruling, um, we should just ensure that the old and new currencies continue to run concurrently so that we can leave this trip. Because again, that education is important. But we find out that a lot of people they're just on their own refusing to take the old currencies. And so that, that's where education needs to be. You can't, how many people with that secular that was on the internet? How many of the people in the rural, rural communities mm -hmm. who are trading, who are buying cow, cattle and cow agriculture produce? You know, we don't see that secular. It's, uh, it's available to you and me. So there needs to be pushed down to different, um, different segments of society that this is a new policy. You know, and that that will take some time, but hopefully that's one of the things that CBN should be doing immediately, ensuring that this um, new secular and the new position of the bank get penetrates to all the, the different sectors of the economy, so that we can relieve this chokehold. Because really, it is it's, 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 it's killing it's killing the economy in many ways. The, the, the additional cost of just getting money. You, Naira, no, no, you're not dealing with foreign currency. Yes. Naira, the additional cost of getting Naira is just unnecessary and it's, it's really unbearable. Yeah, the additional cost of getting Naira. I mean, Nigerians saw yeah. a lot this period, having to buy the <laughs> Naira with Naira. We also <laughs> saw goods wasting at the major mm -hmm. markets because no transportation, mm -hmm. there was no mobilization. A lot of things just went wrong uh, with this yeah. whole thing because of the way it was implemented. And as you have said, and most Nigerians, well, some Nigerians do agree with you, that this is a fantastic policy. It's just the implementation. The implementation is the problem. Now, we are wondering, you know, because um, the CBN no doubt mopped up a lot of money this time around. And uh, no one knows, well, the CBN is in the position to tell us how much of the monies mopped up will be re released into the economy. We also saw lots of monies messed up, bags of money stashed that were um, destroyed, mm -hmm. expired, so to speak. We saw yeah. videos that just made you wonder what is wrong with Nigerians, well, some Nigerians. Why would people pile up such huge amount of money and allow them to waste when they have poor people around them? Well, um, 
clearly there, there's illicit money. There's illicit money, um, and that's it's, it's very economy. And another point, another part of this policy that people plan on this policy that people don't understand is that there is actually black money. There's counterfeiting. And counterfeiting has even started of the of, of the new currency, mm-hmm. and people people do There's no clear figure on the volume of counterfeit currency in the in the economy. You know, and counterfeit currency also adds to inflation. So um, the policy for me, one of the winning points of that policy would have been that counterfeiting currency counterfeiting would have been counter because some people are practically printing money in this country. So again, hopefully all those monies like you talked about, the one that was in bags and all that, will come back to the system. They're, 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 not in, they're not in good condition anyway, and they'll be mm-hmm. turned in. And again, CBN does have the power to regulate how much is going to put back. Because clearly they have an intent. They are determined, and that was a statement, they are determined to ensure that we move towards less cash. It's just that they need to ensure in conjunction with the banks, in conjunction with the fintech community, ensure that the, the infrastructure is there to accommodate the people who are going to move. Already, there has been a 40-something percent um, increase in digital transactions. That should not reduce, in my own view, because we've, we've, we've borne a lot of pain. So there must be some gain from this policy. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So that should not reduce. As a matter of fact, that should grow. But again, we need to onboard more people on that, and that that takes education, that takes penetration messaging. The National you know, Orientation Agency would definitely need to work with the CBN to send the message. We didn't see them. We didn't see them. Didn't see them throughout this. So that's that's one of the mandates. That's some of the things that need to be done. And that's why I say, they, 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 and, and 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 I don't actually blame them because it seems that CBN executed this policy in silence. You know, they didn't carry anybody. The finance minister didn't even know about it. You know, which is yeah. At the beginning, she did say she was not aware. So, so uh, uh, you, 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 how can they? How can how can you carry people along when you don't you don't do the necessary groundwork? So, I think that that's what CBN is to do. I mean, we are not running a voodoo economy. I mean, nothing. It's nothing's going to be kept secret. It's money anyway. <laughs> Whatever thing you're doing about monetary policy, you have to bring it out because people who run the economy. So I think that um, unless there's a different agenda, which a lot of people subscribe to, but that can't work anyway. They need to get people involved, get people buying this policy. It's not a wrong policy, it's just the implementation of the policy that led that, 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 that us to where we are. All right, one of the things, uh, the challenges that this threw up uh, was the issue, well, I mentioned that earlier, the challenge of the digital payment solutions. And so I want to ask you, what legal redress do Nigerians have? Nigerians whose transactions failed but did not get the necessary uh, reversal of such payments that failed in real time. And some still, as we speak, weeks after their transactions failed, they still did not get their monies reversed to them. What legal redress do they have? No, clearly, clearly, um, that's that's legally enforceable, right? It's your money. It's your money. If you if you if you if you put your money in a bank, you're entitled to get it. If you if you transfer money to somebody, and the money doesn't through the banking platform, and the money doesn't deliver, and and it's not at the other end, and it's not at your end. I mean, it really is something that you can enforce. But you see, you see, what happened was that, and I have a lot of situations with this that I'm dealing with right now. I have people who have issues with the bank. But the first point is that because of the way the policy was implemented, a lot of people couldn't even get into the bank. The banks, the banks itself were overstretched. I mean, banks can, were trying to control the people who are trying to get in because everybody was in the bank at the same time. So, I mean, that those kind of those kind of issues now went to went to the background, you know, because you can't even get to the customer customer service or you don't even try going to customer service. Because those are customer service issues. So, so I think that the policy itself overburdened the banks, stretched their capacity to deal with these issues. Hopefully, as the ease of then these issues can be resolved. And where, where 
people have had uh, have money missing, they can sue. I have, a, I have a case that I'm actually dealing with one of my one of my staff who, whose money was withdrawn, ATM issues and all that. But the point is that you can't even get it to the bank in the first place because the banks are ever stretched. So but hopefully we will ease up the, the chokehold of the on the financial system and the people can resolve these issues. It's like again, it's a money man digital, the money may be hanging. This 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 the, the infrastructure itself wasn't ready to accommodate the volume of transactions that came on board at the same time. So you found out that most times um, transactions and I I advise people that you do your transactions later in the evening, late in the night. That's when the traffic is less. It's, it's, it's a simple, it's a simple thinking. You know, if you, if you build a, if you build an infrastructure for gradually building an infrastructure, and then all of a sudden, uh, how many millions of people get on board? You're going to have a problem, and that's what happened. Give us more information again, if you will, about the rights of bank customers with regards mm -hmm. to the reversal of their money. There is supposed to be a 24-hour time within which their money should have gotten back to them, right? Yes, ordinarily, um, that's what they say, but there are some instances. I have, I have one until today, and I haven't had a reversal. I just can't afford to go to the bank, because I can't afford to go in there and I see the whole banking all about it, and I'm trying to explain what happened to my, I think it was how much, 15000 or something. So what I'm saying is that, they tell you, and ordinarily, that's what happens, it, re it reverses. Now, well, if it doesn't reverse, then the banks have a mechanism in which they deal within the interbanking system to, and of course, if it doesn't get back to you, you can sue. You can sue legally. I, I have, even my daughter has a situation with the bank as well. So these are enforceable, because your money cannot get lost in a bank. Your money inside a bank is not supposed to get lost. That's why you take it there. Or else you, why would you keep it, you would keep it at home? Once your money is in a bank, it's supposed to be secure. And so anything that happens while your money is within the banking system, the liabilities of the bank. So you can sue. Mm -hmm. You can sue. Nigerians sure. should have it. <laughs> you can sue. <laughs> I'm sure many Nigerians who didn't know will be very happy to hear that they can sue. You can sue your bank for not reversing mm -hmm. your money that was supposed to have been reversed as a result of failed transactions. Mm -hmm. Vincent Asian, thank you so much mm -hmm. for your time and insights on this very issue that every Nigerian is very concerned about. So finally, the confusion over the legality of the old Naira notes is over. Let's hope that this week, before this week ends, that things would have normalized. Your final words before we go. I think it's going to take time. It's still, it's still, it's still, um, it's still the call of CBN on how, how quickly. Um, but clearly, they also have their own um, mechanisms. How much, um, how much of the old naira is they going to release back into the system? And they should concurrently be printing the new notes as well. Because I, I don't think they're going to have a reversal on that policy. I, I would actually, if I were to advise, focus me on the lower gains, you know, and, and, and that, that's something that can be done. But as for the fact that the currencies are legal tender, that has been determined by Supreme Court. All the currencies, 200, 500, and 1,000 remain legal tender. And the CBN has the capacity and has the instruments to determine how they manage money supply. But they should do it in such a way that we we are out of the chokehold in which the economy has been put for the last one month. It's really unfortunate. And a lot of people are already suffering. There was an incident, I have to say this, uh, really. There was, the late, there was a, a man who told a story about his daughter who was involved in the unfortunate train, train bus accident in Lagos. Oh, my God. And he said that the reason why is daughter was on that box it was because she didn't have cash. Oh my goodness. It, yeah, that, that I have to say this Maureen, and it brought tears to my eyes. And and this unfortunately this policy reversal has probably come too late.
fun. Just yesterday, I heard of someone who trekked to work because he didn't have cash for transportation. Yes. And by the time he got to the office, <laughs> I he slumped, all the time. He slumped and I died. Have, yeah, I have people with, I, have, I deal with that all the time. But the case of that man, I have to see it because he said that's it. That the only reason why she was on the bus was because she didn't have cash. So she took a star course, so otherwise she'd be safe. That's what happened. Very sad. Very sad. Oh, Vincent Asian, thank you again for your time. Thank you. All right. Many thanks for watching. I am Maureen Menon. We do have a good day.